Hello, I'm Richard J. Ferrara, Senior MD. I'm the author of several banjo recordings, and today I'd like to talk about Don Knotts, who was my very best long life friend. All my banjo recordings are really an expression of my love for music and growing up with Don Knotts in Morgantown, West Virginia, where I was born in 1925. I first met Don in the seventh grade in junior high school when we were scheduled to wrestle each other at the gym class. Well, when I looked at him and he looked at me, I could see in him a tough, skinny kid, and I was a fat kid about 50 pounds heavier, so together we looked like Laurel and Hardy. And after we looked at each other, we started laughing and said, forget it. We walked away and had a Coke together, and it was at that time where we bonded for life. We found out we had something in common. We loved to sing, we loved music, and we loved to entertain folks. So we got together and decided to put on a little program for the students. Well, this became popular, and Don Knotts uh, became known as the ventriloquist comedian. And I was uh, the straight man who uh, worked with him and sang with him and played the violin, mandolin, and banjo. So we had a good time together in junior high school. But when we got into high school, we teamed up with another fella by the name of Jarvie Aldred, a handsome young man who was very talented and a great dancer and also played the piano and the ukulele and the musical saw. Well, together we decided to form a little show that we pr produced and, and um, performed at several uh, functions of the community, including uh, many local churches, service clubs, uh, social events in the community, and we became popular and became known as the Radio 3. Well, this, this is how we, we developed our, our group together. During high school, we actually booked many shows involving uh, local community churches, service clubs, social events in the community, and we became popular and as you know, uh, uh, as, we, as I mentioned, being known as the Radio 3. We really had a lot of fun and we were always busy and had a few bucks in our pocket, even despite the fact that we were in the Greatest Depression between 1933 and 1940. Well, this all ended when the Second World War happened and uh, we were drafted. After the uh, war, Don and I returned home and uh, finished getting our education at uh, West Virginia University. Uh, at that particular time, Don decided to uh, get married to his favorite sweetheart, uh, Kay Metz. She was from, from, from Wheeling, West Virginia. At any rate, they uh, got married and Don says, well, I gotta have a job now to support my marriage. And he had a hard time finding a job. So I suggested that we uh, maybe go to Pittsburgh together and maybe visit several agencies and see if he can't land a job there. He says, good idea. So we hit Stike, which was about 75 miles to Pittsburgh from Morgantown. Well, when we got there, we spent the whole day on Saturday visiting various agencies, but to no avail. There was nothing available. Now it's five o'clock, Don is tired and weary, and uh, he consented to let me climb three flights of stairs to the last agency known as the Mildred Smith Agency, talent agency. So I decided, okay, why as well. Walked up the steps, knocked on the door. She opened it slightly and said, I'm sorry, it's five o'clock and we're closed. And I said, wait a minute, I'm not here for me. I'm a medical student. And she suddenly opened the door and said, you're a medical student? I said, certainly. I said, she said, do you know anything about the irritable bowel syndrome? I said, it's funny that you asked. I just studied it and I know everything about it. She says, come on in. So she let me in and Don just sort of stuck in with me and sat quietly in the corner. And for the next 20 minutes, I talked about her irritable bowel syndrome. And she said, this is the best thing ever happened to me in my life. She says, you know, my doctor never explained it so thoroughly as you did. And then, then I said, well, you know, getting back to why I'm here, it's not for me, it's for this young fellow in the corner. You know, he's a... He's a great comedian, and, and he needs a break. And she says, well, what can he do? I says, Don, give her, give her one of your skits. So he gave a football routine, and she started roaring laughing, and she says, just a minute, I got the spot for him. She called up and booked him at the, 
at the uh, Bill Green's nightclub, a famous nightclub in Pittsburgh, and he worked there for several years, two nights a week, as a comedian. And that's how he got his start. He became famous all through Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania. The word reached Arthur Godfrey, and he got a spot on his show. And then he went to New York, and there he tied for first prize, prize at the Arthur Godfrey Show. From that, then he was discovered by uh, by the Steve Allen, and Steve Allen with his uh, decided, you know, he might be a good man on the street act. And uh, Don was sort of nervous and uh, and uh, laid back and a little bit shy, and he sh he said he's the perfect kind of guy on the on the man on the street, and he become known as the famous nervous man on the street. And 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 uh, Steve Allen would ask him, "Are you nervous?" And his famous answer was, "Nope." And he coined that word, and sure enough, he became well known as that famous little man on the street. Well, from then, he went to. Uh, well, this is a very interesting incident, situation. Uh, he went to uh, Cuba with with the show, in which uh, Steve Allen was performing at this famous hotel called the Riviera Havana. At that time, that was before Castro, it was a very famous resort hotel. Well, Don got ill and he called me up and says, you know what, I'm not going to perform unless you come down and take care of me. Well, I said, Don, look, uh, I have no medications. I just came back from Germany and I have no, he said, you got to come down. So I, he said, your expenses are taken care of. I went down, took care of him, and here he was in a state of anxiety because he was a fearful of the Cuban doctors. Well, I gave him one of the only shot I had, which was a sedative. And sure enough, he felt better, and we would decided to get down and have breakfast. And while we were having breakfast, he fainted. Well, not because he had low blood pressure himself, but because the medication itself lowered his blood pressure even more. And I knew it was wrong. And I said, give me some Cuban coffee. I gave him some Cuban coffee, brought him back, and everybody got excited about this doctor who flew in from Detroit to save this person's life. The news got back to my hometown in Morgantown, and on the news front page it says, two local boys do good, the other saves the other one's life. And that's how I became famous <laughs> with Don. <laughs> At any rate, that's a good story about Don. Well, after that, Andy and uh, Andy Griffith and uh, Don Knotts became friends. Andy Griffith then started his own show called The Andy Griffith Show, and he invited Don to come in to be the nervous sher sheriff that was the comedy act in his show. Well, Don became famous in The Andy Griffith Show as the nervous, fumbling sheriff who was permitted to have a pistol with only one bullet in it. So this series went on and, and became one of the top series of the century. Well, Don then was, became rather popular at that time, and he started to produce his own show for a, a weekly uh, event that lasted about a year, but then he went on and made several movies. And from that, he joined up with Tim Conway and made some more great comedy movies, the first one being The Apple Dumplin' Gang, which was a big hit. Well, after that, Tom, uh, Tim Conway and, and Don sort of teamed up and made live appearances throughout the country at various theaters. And then in his later life, this is how he spent his time, uh, that plus being on a show called, um, well, I think Three's a Company, that was a Three's a Company. And then finally his last movie in, in which he made called Back in Time. That was a very beautiful movie that that was his last movie. Now I'd like to show you some photographs concerning the um, the past highlights uh, involving my life with Don Knotts. Now the first one here is a, a picture of uh, of Don with uh, two family members that had the greatest impact in his life. His his brother, older brother Bill, seated there, and his mother. She was a sweet, gentle lady, very much like the same character of Aunt B in the series, The Andy Griffith Show. The next picture is one of uh, Don Knotts in junior high school, where he performed as a ventriloquist and comedian. 
The next picture is one of Jarvey Eldred and Don Knotts in high school. As I mentioned, Jarvey was a handsome young man, talented in dancing, playing the piano, ukulele, singing, and, and also playing the musical saw, which he was superb in. We formed together, the three of us, and called ourselves the Radio Three. Here's a picture of the Radio Three as we got together with uh, myself playing the banjo, Jarvey with his musical saw, that's played with a violin bow, and Don in the background. This was taken in, in high school. And now here's a picture of uh, myself and with Don Knotts and myself when I visited him in New York, New York to celebrate his first professional radio show in B Bar B and his winning and tying for first prize at the Arthur Godfrey Show. This is the first time in his life that he finally made the big time and we were both very happy about it. We toured New York and had a great visit together. This is a picture taken from the Steve Allen Tonight Show showing the nervous man on the street and Don Knotts uh, always answered uh, when he was asked the question, are you nervous? And he would say in a prolonged manner, nope. And actually, he coined that word. This is a photograph of the fumbling, nervous sheriff with the uh, one bullet pistol. This is uh, uh, on the Andy Griffith show showing his typical character. Then the next scene is also a uh, scene from the Andy Griffith show, which uh, reveals his true uh, phlegmatic character as he stands in the bedroom. Here's Don Knotts' first big movie hit entitled The Incredible Mr. Limpet. It became a very popular movie among the youth particularly, and from then on, he made several comedy movies. Now, we had many reunions back in Morgantown, the three of us, and this is a picture here of, uh, of uh, the three of us having a little f song fest with some of our classmates at my sister's house, Helen Bryant, in Morgantown. This is another picture of us together. <clears throat> playing and singing and having a great evening at her home. And here is a picture of us in the Radio 3 outside of her home in Morgantown, West Virginia. This was during our later years, our mid-years, but we always got together and had fun and recalled the old times as the Radio 3. Well, one, one day Don came to uh, Gross Point, Michigan, where he visited me and he uh, completed a film for the uh, Chrysler Corporation. And here he's visiting me, and we, again, we had a good sing-along fest, went out to dinner a few times, and really enjoyed each other's company. And then, finally, I got to see his awards, his Emmy Awards, in his home in Beverly Hills. And you can see he had several of them. And uh, he, uh, he was standing beside there, I really enjoyed the time with him, and of course, we never did uh, uh, leave to, or without singing and harmonizing together. A great song fest again. Well, here's a commercial picture of uh, of Andy Griffith and Dan Don Knotts, the nervous sheriff, in the uh, Andy Griffith uh, series, in which Don was the comical uh, nervous sheriff. And again, after he became famous, he made several movies. And here is one in which he is with Tim Conway uh, in the, uh, the famous comedy movie, um, The Apple Dumpling Gang. He went on and uh, gave several shows performing with uh, Tom uh, Conway throughout the country, performing in live theater. He then subsequently joined uh, the uh, TV show uh, Three's Company, where Andy Griffith was also involved. And then later, 
he uh, sort of slowed down, but he became known as one of the famous TV stars in Hollywood where they commemorated him as the, uh, as you can see, celebrating the uh, Hall of Fame, which he's now a star implanted in the sidewalk of Hollywood and known as one of the greatest stardoms in, in uh, uh, that reached stardom in, in Hollywood. Here it is a picture of Andy Griffith and, and Don Knotts looking at the sidewalk. And then the last together of the Radio 3 was here, Don Knotts, myself, and Jarvie Eldred on our way to a restaurant after s to celebrate his award, the famous award that he won in the Hollywood stardom. And then finally, the last picture that I have of Don visiting me in Petoskey, Michigan, in, uh, on Lake um, Walloon Lake, where we were singing and, and, and enjoying our last song fest. And this is it. I never saw him again until he passed away in 2006. Unfortunately, I was not there at the time, but I talked to him several times on the phone. And I just wanted to say in conclusion that I was very happy to share some of these wonderful experiences that I had with Don Knotts growing up with him and knowing him all those years. I, I, I wanted to share the blessing I received by having <coughs> him as my closest friend and that we maintained a close friendship from the time we bonded in the seventh grade junior high school until he passed away in 2006. I was fortunate to be the last person to talk to Don on the phone one hour before he passed away. Thank you again, and God bless you.